that the, the virus, all something like a crisis like this does is accelerates whatever was going to happen. Yeah. So if you were already in business trouble, this just made it happen faster. That's true. It and exposed so, a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. And I, I remember back in like 2008 when, when that happened, um, I was at that time I was the director of small to mid-sized business at the Metro Atlanta Chamber. And um, the, the fallout really was felt mostly by real estate people. You know, the people who had been in it because it was so good and anybody could sell real estate, it really kind of, you know, separated the wheat from the chaff and, yeah. it, you know, made it clear. Well, I think a lot of the businesses that struggled were the ones that didn't have a disaster recovery plan or a recession recovery plan. Right. Um, as a consultant working with companies, we used to sit down and have what if sessions. What sure. if this happened? How are you going to overcome this? What if your supply chain suddenly broke? How, what would you do? And I don't think businesses think like that. Nobody foresaw. You know, yeah. So I'm Glenn Gould with Dry Cleaning Connection, and this is our program, Connections. Uh, we have such a great group of clients who we can lean upon and learn from and hopefully share with you. And so today uh, we have somebody with us that's one of our clients that I really think will give great value to you if you're in business. And even if you're not, I mean, we're all in business, even in our personal lives. And Coach Harlan has... Uh, graciously agreed to join us today. Coach, if you would tell us a little bit about you, what you do, um, and uh, and how you ended up getting into that. Sure. Uh, my name is Harlan Hammock. I'm a business coach, leadership coach, speaker, and author. Uh, got into mainly consulting, started off consulting, about 25 years consulting as an organizational change, business transformation coach, um, working with companies that were undergoing some major change like a merger, acquisition, uh, business process reengineering, restructuring of the business. I'd worked with the executive team to help them identify the change, communicate that change, and then lead their people through the change. Sure. My job was to try to get the employees to be as productive after as they were before. But after getting on a plane every Monday and Friday for 25 years, <laughs> I decided to kind of take a break. Um, so I'm doing just fo focusing now on coaching and working with local small to mid-sized businesses to help them with the changes that they're going through in their business. Okay, great. And so, you know, if there is ever a time of change, I mean, I would say this uh, is this is it. Absolutely. What, what are you seeing out there with the clients that you work with and, and maybe even the ones you don't that maybe you should be working with? Yeah. You know, what, what's going on and what do you what do you think is going to happen? That kind of thing. Yeah, most of my clients were, I mean, fortunately they were safe. There were no illnesses uh, with my, my clients. Uh, most of them survived pretty, pretty good. A couple of them had to switch from uh, more residential to commercial since a lot of the commercial businesses were closed down, it gave them the opportunity to go in and do work, um, HVAC, electronics, things like that. Um, I have actually have one client who's growing. His business has grown so much, he's actually hiring more people. But I think where people got in trouble was uh, businesses didn't have a disaster recovery plan, a recession recovery plan. So when something like this happens, they had no idea what to do. They were caught flat-footed. Um, and that's one thing we used to do in the, in the consulting is work with businesses to say, hey, if, if this happened, if your supply chain broke down, if, if you couldn't get these materials, you know, how would your business survive? Yeah. Get them to think about that pivot. And I think that's really what, what businesses need to do is be able to take their strengths and pivot and use them in another way. Yeah, we, um, uh, we were talking last week with uh, Colin at uh, the Fayette Chamber, and one of the things we discussed is the idea that um, you know, entrepreneurs are so overly optimistic that you don't really plan for what if something goes wrong. Uh, you, on, I, I was poking around on your website and um, I saw a video there. If you, uh, what, what is it's what is the uh, website address? Uh, the website is ib4e-coaching.com. Okay, and uh, this video, and you can probably find it on YouTube as well. Um, you tell a little story about your your private pilot and a pretty powerful lesson you learned that's kind of carried you through. If you would share that with, with folks. Sure, uh, as a private pilot, I took training right over here in Peachtree City at Falcon Field. We were on a, a training flight. My instructor and I were flying, we were up at about seven, 8,000 feet. And my instructor said, hey, what's that off your left wing? So when I turned to look out the window, he reached over and pulled the power out on the plane. Now, if you've ever been in a small Cessna, little plane like that, you know how loud it is in the cockpit. It was silent, it was just silent. And of course, I spun around and looked at him. My eyes were about this big. And I said, what the heck just happened? And he said, you just lost your engine. What do you do now? Wow. And I, yeah, I started to panic. But then he said, just remember your training. What did we go through in class, right, in ground school? And one of the things he taught us in ground school was aviate, navigate, communicate. And that's what all pilots learn. Uh, aviate means fly the plane. Whatever's going on, don't take your focus off of your main job, which is to fly the plane, keep everybody safe. Yes, fix the problem, but focus on that main 
uh, navigate, know where you are, where you're trying to get to, and mm -hmm. what you need to do to get back on course if you find yourself off course. And then communicate. Be able to articulate what's going on, give commands to your, your employees, uh, coach them through whatever the situation is, g clear, concise instructions so they know exactly how to get back on track. Um, and so I try to carry that into my coaching now as I'm working with my clients, try to talk to them about, you know, focus on your business, make sure you're running your business, fix this or delegate this task to someone else while you keep the business running. You know, if you, if you stop doing your business, you'll lose clients, which doesn't help the situation, probably exacerbates it even more. Um, so aviate, navigate, communicate. And I, I use that in most of the sessions that I do. In fact, I've got a, a, a 12 week boot camp going on right now. It's called the Barnstormers Boot Camp. You know, the Barnstormers were like the original entrepreneurs, right? They're World War I pilots who came back from, from uh, war. They wanted to fly, but there were no commercial jobs at the time. But they wanted to make money and they wanted to fly and have fun. So they started doing these um, aerial acrobatics, a uh, flying circus. And they would, to market themselves, they would dive bomb and buzz the main streets of small towns to draw cool. everybody out of the buildings and then fly back around and drop flyers saying, hey, come out to the old Johnson place and watch us and, you know. So I'm, I'm trying to use those same lessons that the, the barnstormers use to teach my clients everything from setting your goals, putting in implementation plan, how you put those goals in place, metrics, finances, sales, marketing, everything like that, to think like a barnstormer and kind of sure. take that extra step. So um, it sounds to me like, and, and I know, you know, this probably, you know, a lot of it applies to me. I'm, I'm in business. Um, if you, you know, if, if you were out there and you started up your business and things were going really pretty well, you, you probably neglect those things. It seems to me that the key thing you said to me there was, is don't forget your training. Well, if you haven't had that training, well, then you can probably find yourself in trouble pretty quick as a business person. That's a, that's a big thing. A lot of businesses, people will buy a business from someone and learn how they used to run the business and they'll continue to run it that way. Well, if that person overlooked things, made mistakes, you're just compounding those, right? Sure. Um, so that's what I try to do is go in and not, not change everything you do, but let's look at what you're doing, what is working, let's keep it working. Whatever's not working, let's improve it. And then if there's in, things missing, let's put a plan together to, to get those things in place. And so um, let me ask you this. It, with, with business people today, I mean, there's a lot of fear out there. There's a lot of worry out there. And, and unfortunately, there's a lot of folks who probably are in a position where it's like, you know, I don't know, maybe I, need, I just need to give up. How would somebody know that? And, and would they ever know it on their own? Is, do they need somebody like you, somebody, a trusted advisor who can come in and kind of say, listen, let's take a look at where you really are before you do something rash. Exactly, and you brought up the trusted advisor and that's one of the things that I think everybody needs. I, I have a business coach that I talk to on a weekly basis. Right. I think everybody needs someone that they can bounce ideas off of, say, hey, here's what I'm thinking, here's what I'm feeling, is this normal? Um, if there's ever a question, is, is there more that I could be doing? Um, is this enough? A lot of people think if they make enough money to pay their bills, to pay their employees, keep the lights on, that that's success. Well, that is a level of success, but there's more. There could You could be leaving money on the table. Talk to somebody. If it's not me as a business coach, find another business coach. Find another person who's in business and talk about what it is you do and, and what you're thinking and stuff. Sure. I think everybody could use help. Sure. Absolutely. So um, I kind of jumped, jumped uh, right in because I'm fascinated by what you do. Um, but tell me a little bit just about you, uh, you know, maybe you a little something personal, sure. you know, how long you've been in the area, that kind of thing. Yeah, I uh, started off as a child. Um, I grew oh, up really? In, grew up in Southern California. Uh, worked for Lockheed Aircraft out there for 10, 12 years. Moved out to Atlanta and then down to Florida for about five years. Met my wife uh, and we moved back up here. And Where in Florida? We were down in uh, the Orlando area, Tampa area, okay. Sarasota. Okay. Then we moved back up here. We had a house over in Sharpsburg for a long time and with both of us traveling, we had people cleaning the house, mowing the lawns, taking care of the dogs. They saw our house more than we did. <laughs> so right. we ended up uh, selling the house, and now we live over in Noonan. We've got a condo over in Noonan. Cool. And um, so, so you travel, you say your wife travels, yes, travel too? Absolutely. or Does she still? Or? She does. Okay. Uh, both as consultants, we'd fly out Monday, fly back home Friday. Most right. of the time we'd go to the airport and go to different terminals to fly different areas, and then we'd come back, meet in baggage claim on Friday, and come home yeah. for the weekend. Uh, because of COVID, her project that she's on has 
um, continued to run, but it shut down, so everybody's working remotely. So she is up early because part of her project team is in Ireland, part of her project team is here in the U.S., scattered across the U.S. Sure. So it's it's been it's been fun, but yeah, we would travel for. So it may years. sound a little crazy, but uh, tell me something. Maybe one of your favorite things about the area, just because, uh, or maybe a favorite restaurant or something like that. Oh. Just. I'm a big foodie, so yeah. I love restaurants. A uh, lot of them over in in Noonan. Uh, like to go uh, knife and stone, yep. right? Um, in Noonan, love Mexican food. So, so there's La Peria over there, La but then there's uh, Los Abuelos. Abuelos, that's yeah, that's, uh, that's that's Tito that's Martinez is one of the owners there. That yeah, that's a great one restaurant. Of our yeah. yeah, but that's one thing we love to do. We and over here in, in Peachtree City, we like to go over to Palmer's. Yeah, um, Palmer's is great. Great, but there's a, a lot of good restaurants. So I'm so glad that we have the restaurants and things down here. We don't have to drive all the way up through Atlanta to do things anymore. Yeah, we're, we're starting to get those businesses down here. Yeah. So what, what, um, just going back to, uh, the, the, the climate right now in, in business, um, if, if you were to give advice to somebody that you don't know that, you know, just to kind of a general, you know, if nothing else, maybe do this first, you know, um, what, what would you kind of suggest to somebody if they were going to try to do it on their own? Right. Um, earlier we talked about that book by Mike McCallowitz called yep. fix this next. Um, he has what he calls his business hierarchy of needs. And it's kind of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There are certain things you have to have in place, be settled so that you can then grow into these other areas. Well, the base of the business hierarchy of needs is sales. If your sales aren't where they need to be, it's hard to focus on profit, hard to focus on order and systematizing your business and everything like that. I would say look at your sales, know your numbers. How much money do you need just to break even? How much in sales, in revenue, does it, uh, do you need to bring in to cover those costs? Um, how much do you need to, to pay for your own lifestyle? You know, we go into business as entrepreneurs to create a lifestyle for ourselves. Right. Are you making that money and how much in revenue do you need to make or how many unit sales do you need to make to make sure you have that money for that? A lot of businesses don't know their numbers. You ask them, what's your break even? They don't know. What was your revenue last year? I think we did pretty good. Yeah. You gotta know your numbers. Yeah, we've uh, recently, we, well, over the past couple of years, we, we bought a competitor locally um, who did know their numbers and it cost us, <laughs> just saying. But uh, but you know, a lot of the competitors we try to talk to about maybe merging or, or buying from them, they, they really don't have any idea what they're doing, and they have no way to track it either. So, but it sounds like really even for non entrepreneurs, people just in their homes, sure. the same idea. I mean, yeah. you got to know how much is coming in, you got to know what you can afford, and, and don't overextend yourself. You think about, it. I mean, your family is a business. Yeah, you have revenue coming in, you have money going out. You have to know what you need to cover all your expenses. And in business, it's the same thing. How much revenue do you need? What are your fixed expenses? And what can you do to reduce those? Sure. And uh, Mike McCallowitz is big on profit. You, know, yeah. you go into business to generate a profit. Set aside your profit first, right? Rather than revenue minus expenses equals profit, he says change that. Revenue minus profit leaves your expenses, which m means you'll focus more on reducing your expenses, but you're always making that profit, setting it off to the side so you get some benefit from being in business. Kind of sounds like what Brian Tracy used to teach, pay, pay yourself first. Absolutely. So yeah, Absolutely. well that's good. Um, one last question that I'd, I'd like to ask you, and that is, um, what would you say uh, to somebody who, because we kind of touched on it, and you did touch on it, but to somebody who just doesn't know what to do next? You know, I, I know that, in, in you know, what could you do for somebody if they, were to, if they were to reach out to you and say, you know, what would they expect to hear from you? What would they expect to, you know, what would be kind of like the first interaction and, and that kind of thing? The first interaction with me is free. Um, I don't, a lot of people charge for that, that first coaching session to find out what's wrong. Well, I, if we don't know what's wrong, we don't know if we can fix it. So the first complimentary coaching session with me is absolutely free. You spend about an hour going through your business. I, I ask a lot of questions. It, it, my goal is to try to learn as much as I can about your business. And then we sit down and say, here are one or two things that need to be fixed right away that make a difference. If you choose to go off and do them on your own, good luck. <laughs> That's great. If you want some help doing that, I can help. I've got strategies. I've got 25 years of consulting experience from industries all you know, around, working with businesses in the US, Canada, Mexico, the UK. I've got solutions, I've got templates, I've got things to fix. So if we could sit down and talk just for an hour, give me 60 minutes. Um, in fact, that's one of my, my folks is give me 60 minutes and I'll give you back six to eight hours in your week, guaranteed, just by streamlining, focusing, prioritizing, 
Well, that, that sounds like a bargain to me. I don't know anybody who doesn't need more time in their week. Sure. And uh, certainly uh, entrepreneurs. So, uh, Harlan, thank you so much for coming in today, um, for sharing with our, our, our um, clients and our viewers. Uh, again, it's I before E dash consult. Coaching. Oh, coaching. I'm sorry. Okay, and that's I, the letter I, B, the letter B, four, the number four, and E, the letter E. Exactly. Correct? Just okay. like in school, I before E, except after C. If you keep that, it's not 100%. Sometimes Y and W, I don't know. Exactly, exactly. It's not 100%, but 95 to 97% of the time, you can spell the words correctly, right? Well, same thing in business. There's certain things you should do in a certain order consistently, and if you do 95 to 97% of the time, you're going to be fine. Awesome. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you very much. Appreciate Take it. Take care. Thanks.